Good morning, guys. The psalmist David said it was good to be in the house of the Lord. We are here today, and uh, we are here to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Nice to see all of you. Let's go to prayer. But before we do, we always like to pray for a different ministry and a different pastor every week in the area. And let's uh, pray for Pastor Darrell Strickland. Uh, in Oxford Assemblies uh, and their efforts in reaching others for Jesus Christ. We always like to pray for our family, our church family, uh, who have come this morning with various needs and want to bring those before the Lord today. For those who are sick and not well, let's lift them up in prayer that God would restore strength and bring healing. So let's go to prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your goodness and your mercy stores us. We thank you for past blessings upon our lives. But we realize today that past blessings cannot suffice. And so we come to you today with our cups turned up, with a spirit of expectancy that you will pour us out your blessing upon our lives, upon this service today. We thank you and we praise you. I pray for our church family that you watch over every single one of us. We pray for the various needs that are being represented here just now, especially for that family or individual who may have walked into the worship area with a heavy heart, with a burden. I pray, oh God, that you would ever be so close to that individual and family and, uh, and just let them know that you are with them when they are not alone. We thank you and we praise you. Be with Oxford Assembly and, and the pastor and, and their team as they reach out uh, to reach others for Jesus Christ. Bless their efforts. We thank you and, and we praise you for what you're going to do through them. I pray for Pastor Don that you watch over him as he would come and share the word with us. I pray, oh God, that you would open our hearts, our ears, our minds, that we would be able to grasp the truth and apply it to our and lives. We thank you and we praise you. Be with our worship team. Bless them today as they raise their voices and warm our hearts with songs and with scripture. We thank you and we praise you. And bless us as we are being faithful to you today in our giving, in our tithes, in our offering. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. And before we start this song, we need your participation this morning. So when we sing, you are good, you're going to say all the time. When we say all the time, you're going to say, you are good. This is our God, right? So we came here this morning. He is good all the time. So let's look at that again. So you are good. All the time. All the time. You are good. There you go. You got it. Stay with us this morning.
are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. this time we give this this worship service to you God God we've gathered together because we're here to lift up your name God God I pray that you just you help remove us God and in, in, in any agenda that we may bring through those doors with us God remove that at this moment God prepare our hearts for your word God I pray that you would just touch pastor as he brings your message today God that each and every one of us that came through those doors that that we would have an encounter with you, Lord, that would not make it possible for us to leave this building the very same way that we came in, Lord. God, we, we put our faith and trust in you, and we believe on these things. In your son Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. It is great to be back in the house of the Lord. I missed you guys last week, and um, I'm grateful for everybody who said they missed me. Thanks. It's fun to be, it's fun to be known. Um, anyway, that was a crazy way of putting it, wasn't it? Um, my name's Barb. I'm Pastor Don's wife. I'm also a volunteer here, and it's uh, my privilege and joy to welcome you here this morning. You should have received a program when you came to the door. We actually did run out, and I'm sorry about that. But if you are new here and you didn't get a program, please uh, come see me in the back. If you are a first-time guest, we would love for you to stop by the welcome table, fill out the connection card. I have a gift for you. The connection card is at the bottom of the program, tears off like that. Woo. We like every person to fill one out every single week. It's just our way to know, kind of keep track of who's here and who's not. Just make sure we can get, uh, touch base with you if you're missing for a couple of weeks because, you know, we're the, we're the family of God. And we want to check up on each other, right? Um, th uh, the information on the back does change every week. So if you want to look at the back, we have some upcoming events. We have a men's breakfast on Saturday, August 5th at 8 a.m. Uh, so that is here at the church, and it's... Uh, is it in the conference room? Oh, it's out here. Never mind. Excuse me. It's here, um, and all men are welcome. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to know anybody to come. Just show up. We like to to be very welcoming and, and allow every person to um, get invested into. Uh, on next Sunday, we have a lot of fun events coming up. Next Sunday at 5 o'clock. Now, this is different. We have not done this before. So, Please note, it's not right after church. It's at 5 o'clock p.m. We are having a church-wide potluck, so you get to come back. Isn't that fun? Uh, come for the morning service, then come back at 5 o'clock. Bring your food. We're going to have a little church-wide potluck. And we do the potlucks in order to kind of get to know each other, right? Because on Sunday mornings, you're all facing this direction. Um, and we want a potluck so that we can learn who we are and get to know each other. And then right after the potluck, uh, we are going to... Uh, Wildwood Middle High School, which is on Huey Street, in order to pray. So it's a back-to-church prayer. It's, it's countywide. I think it's statewide even. So all the um, schools will have people praying at them at the same time. So it's pretty kind of fun, and Pastor Don is in charge of the one that's here at uh, the Wildwood Middle High School. So we will clean up, and then we will head over there to pray for the school because schools are starting soon and very soon. 
Um, and then on Tuesday the 8th, you know, I'm reluctant. I don't ever know whether this is appropriate or not, but I think it is because um, you all are sort of a part of it. On August 8th, some of you know that I wrote a book, and we're going to celebrate the book. Um, it's launching on the 8th. <laughs> You guys, I just can't not celebrate with my church family. So we're having a party here, and y'all are invited, 6.30. There will be refreshments, and I'll be reading an excerpt from the book if I can get through it. And, um, of course, there'll be books for sale, and I'll be signing them, and you can say, I know an author. Woot. Um, <laughs> you probably know several. You just don't know it. Um, okay. Uh, look at the shoes, you guys. Isn't this fun? Yes. Absolutely. Souls for souls. So we are blessing people throughout the world. So your little uh, contribution here blesses people throughout the world. And we will be sending those off to souls for souls so that they can send them off to the people. And our, um, when you check in on Facebook this month, we are giving money to souls for souls because it costs them money to send these shoes all over the world. So we're going to give them money. We're going to send them shoes and they are going to be blessed by your giving. Thank you very much. Um, just a reminder, you can give to the church by texting 352-444-1771, or you can give in the blue box next to the door. Okay, stay after for uh, pastries and coffee, and we hope you find the service relevant. Okay. And do we have effects? Yeah. Okay. So I can't wander today. All right. Okay. Well, hey, welcome. Uh, we're in our fourth week of a sermon series called Life on Mission. And as you can tell, the mission is always ongoing. There's always surprises, and uh, like this one. Um, so Life on Mission, we're asking... What does it look like to live my life on mission? What does it look like uh, to, to live on mission? And if we're going to live life on mission, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to truly walk with Jesus. We're going to have to walk as he walked. Uh, Dr. Weber, in his final book, wrote this. He said, May the church not be formed by the world in which it lives, but by the narrative which it belongs the story of God. And when I hear that, I know that I, along with the rest of the church, I really like that quote. But I also know that I, along with the church, sometimes forget that the church has a culture itself. Okay. The, the, the town I live in, my family, the city, the state, the, the country, it, it all has a culture. And so I need to be very careful that I'm actually following Jesus, that I'm, that I'm walking in his step. Uh, tra a mission group called uh, Traveling Team, they wrote this. They said, God is a missionary God. From cover to cover, he is showing us his mission. This mission is the context of the story of the Bible. The overarching narrative drives all that God does. Only when we know the context of his story, we can understand our purposes in life. So as, as we walk through this, and, and, and I think about this all the time, because, you know, sometimes we'll have like a sermon and I'll have points. And sometimes my, my, my fear, even in my own life, is that we extract principles and we add those principles to our story rather than seeing them a part of the story with a capital S. And so that's one of the reasons why I, I often you'll hear me say is the gospel is an invitation to exchange stories. 
We're, we're invited to a new story, a different story. Now, today I'm going to spend most of my time in Acts chapter 10, where the apostle Peter, he meets this centurion, which, which is a strange encounter. You know, we hear that, we're like, oh, okay, he's going to meet this guy. No, it's a really strange encounter. But before we turn there, you can turn there if you want, <laughs> hold, hold your spot, but I, I want to back up a little bit and go to Matthew chapter 8, verses 10 through 12, because the story in Acts 10 is the beginning of a fulfillment of an encounter that Jesus has with another centurion. And Jesus, it, it, it's funny, you go through the Bible, Jesus is not typically amazed, all right? Jesus kind of like comes in and he's not, but, but Jesus is amazed in this story. So if, if you want to do something that amazes Jesus, then maybe do whatever this centurion did. So... Matthew 8, beginning at verse 10, it says, And when Jesus heard this, the centurion made some kind of statement. He marveled, and he said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from the east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness in the place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. How many of you have noticed that sometimes life or the story you're living doesn't go as you plan? I was thinking, yeah, sometimes that's a really good thing, right? And I was thinking sometimes we ought to, not, not always, okay, and don't do this with other people because they might find it inappropriate. But occasionally you might just want to go, oh, plot twist, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm, don't do it with other people. Do it with your own story, all right? But, but that's, that's really what's happening right here. This, this, is, this is a plot twist. So uh, many of the first, or most of the first century Jews, they didn't think like every single Jew was going to sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But most of them thought only Jews would sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plot twist. Jesus gives a plot twist here. Jesus is saying, okay, it's not about being an ethnic Jew. It's not even about conversion to Judaism. The most, one of the most revolutionary features that we have in the gospel is its demoli demolition of barriers between Jews and Gentiles. Okay? This, this door is opened up. And Jesus is saying, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm inviting people from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every walk of life to that table, most importantly here, through faith in Jesus. Okay? Jesus is saying that table is open up to anyone that has faith in me. All right, so, so this is our background story. But before I move forward, I want to point out something about Jesus and his disciples. Think about how much of their ministry revolved around tables. And it revolved around sitting at tables with people that didn't belong at the kingdom table. All right? They, they were not a part of that table yet. I mean, Jesus did this so often that they said, he's a drunkard and a glutton. All right? You're sitting at the table a lot if you're being called a, a drunken and, and a glutton. And, and there's something that, that I think we need to catch on to. Studies show that most people do not change their mind or their behavior because we throw facts and opinions out at them, all right? I, I can rant all day long. People don't change their facts and opinions. They might get a good laugh, but they don't change. They don't change their opinion. By and large, by and large, people change. People grow in the context of a loving relationship. Right? It's in the context of a loving relationship. Let, let me just throw out a radically crazy idea here. What if, what if you and I were to invite people to the kingdom table through use of common tables? Invite people to the table through common tables. Think about this. For centuries, what, what does the, the table represent? 
It's this real life metaphor of community, of welcoming, welcoming, sitting and eating together. What if, what if, getting radical again here, I'm just kind of just throwing out some questions, ideas. What if you and I are supposed to live out a story in our daily lives that paints a story or a picture of where we're headed? What, 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 what if our actions now tell a story? And here's a, here's a question, and you might want to answer this before you leave today. What's the common table you're using? You're like, oh, I don't have a table. Do you have a couch? <laughs> do, do, do you have a table where you drink coffee? Do, is, what, what, what is the table that you're using to invite people to the table? Okay? What are you using to point them to that? Now, to be totally fair, the word table doesn't show up in Acts chapter 10. But I, I, I will show you that this is exactly what Peter's going to do in Acts chapter 10. So let's, let's turn uh, to Acts chapter 10. Uh, in verses 1 through 8, we know a couple things. There's this centurion, his name's Cornelius, and he's a God-fearer. Um, and what does that mean? It, this is somebody, he actually is worshiping Yahweh, um, but he hasn't made a, a full conversion to Judaism. If, if you need details on that, I can explain later what he hasn't done. Um, <laughs> but he's, he's seeking some answers. He wants to know something ab about God, the God of Israel in particular. And he gets this vision. God, God sends him a vision to, to this, this outsider, this guy that's not tip, not currently reclining at the table. He sends this vision, and then Cornelius, he's got some servants, and he, and he sends them out, hey, go get this guy, Peter. I got a vision, and they told me to go get, get this guy. Now, this tells me a couple things. First of all, God's already at work in the harvest. You know, it, it's kind of like sometimes we think like, hey, what am I going to do for God? And God's like, over here, just join me, you know? God's at work all around us. What My job, our job, is to keep my eyes open, keep my ears open, and probably most importantly, keep my heart open. Okay, God, where is it that you're at work? Because I want to join you where you're working. You know, I, I don't want to push the cart uphill, and, unless you're telling me push the cart uphill. But I want to join you where you're working. And there's a second thing that this is telling me, is, is that you're joining others who have already labored in the harvest. Right? Sometimes we think, we say, oh, I led this person to the Lord. Ah, oh, you were there when they said some prayer or they got baptized or something like that. There's a real good chance somebody else has shared the gospel with them. There's a real good chance they've had some encounters with some other people. Discipleship is not a one-person show. All right? You go to a church where it's a one-person person show, yeah, we're just going to leave that. Okay. God is already at work in Cornelius' life, and he's had enough connections with, with Jewish people that, that he says, okay, there's something about these people. They have something that I want. And, and Jesus, Jesus even told his disciples when he sent them out. He, he said, I send you to reap for what you did not labor. He said, others have labored, and you're entering into their labor. So these guys, they're, they're sent out. And, and this is radical stuff if, if you don't understand uh, first century um, social constructs and politi political things that are going on. This is kind of radical that, that these guys are going out to find this Jewish man sent by a centurion. Well, they're, they're on their way there. And Peter's on this rooftop, and he's waiting for dinner, and he falls into a trance. I'm like, this guy's got an appetite like me. He's falling into a trance here. <laughs> and uh, so Peter's, think, Peter's hungry. What kind of vision do you think God's going to give him? Well, probably about food, yeah. Yeah. So God gives him this vision, and there's, there, there's this sheet, and it's, it's all in there, um, I'll, I'll take up my whole time if I just read it all to you. But, but there's this sheet, and, it, and it's coming down, and there's all kinds of animals. There, there's clean animals, unclean animals, animals that, that Peter's like, yeah, no, I've never eaten that in my life, and I'm not ever going to. And uh, 
And, and God tell, okay, uh, let's just jump in at verse 13, Acts 10, 13. And there came a voice to him, and he said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. What? There's unclean animals here. I've read Leviticus. But Peter said to him, by no means, Lord, I have never eaten anything that, that is common or unclean. And then a voice came to him a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. Now, just to make sure Peter gets this, God does this three times. You know, I, I can relate to Peter. You know, and probably the third time he's like, ah, oh, hey, God, I have a great idea. <laughs> uh, now, Peter doesn't know something yet. While God is telling Peter, okay, Peter, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you somewhere, and, it, and it's going to be okay for you to eat there, all right? There's a much bigger picture. There's a much bigger picture than food. God is removing a barrier that deals with Peter's prejudice. All right, this, this is the, the bigger picture here. There's a, a wider narrative. The wider narrative is declared by Peter himself. This, this is when I know, Peter, you got it. Acts 15, 9. Peter, from his own mouth, he says, and he made no distinction between us and them. We live in a world that likes to make distinctions between us and them. Having cleansed their hearts by faith. Okay? You have your hearts cleansed by, cleansed by faith? You've got a spot at that table. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The us... And the them, you know how they come to the table? Same way. Same way. Interest, entrance is through faith in Jesus Christ. And yes, God is at work. God is at work in that other person's life. Other people are at work in that other person's life. But you know what? Sometimes what, what the greatest need is? It's the work in our lives. It's the work in the life of the messenger. All right? When we go out and do ministry, God is at work with us. Think about this. The, the book of Acts is like a third of the way over, and they haven't, they haven't reached out to anybody. I, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's one uh, little strange story about uh, Ethiopian eunuch, but beyond that, it's like, hey, we, we've just been reaching out with the boys we know. And it takes this revelation from God. You know, I mean, Jesus already told him, go, go out and preach the gospel to all ethnos, to all nations. And, and he gets, now he gets this spe special revelation. And, and I want to make sure that, that we don't miss something here. I, I think God is, is saying, saying something to Peter um, that, that he's, not, he's not just saying to Peter, and Peter's not like, oh, man, that's an awesome revelation. I can go eat pork chops now. All right? <laughs> that, that's, not, that's not the takeaway there. All right? By your own conscience or whatever, you know, feel free to eat whatever you want. You work that out with God. But what this picture is telling us is that God is saying to Peter, I want my people to be a picture, to be a sign of what the kingdom is like. I, I'm gonna send, I want to send you down. I, I want to send you out there. And think about this through, through. If we can't sit at common tables with people, how are we going to invite them to the kingdom table? We can't sit at common tables. We can't sit across from one another here. What makes us think we're going to do that in the hereafter? We need, we need to be a picture of, of, of what's going on. It, it really, what God is doing is saying, Peter, I'm going to send you on a mission, and I'm going to prepare you. Because when you get there, it's going to be weird. <laughs> and, and you need to be prepared for that. And I read that, and I think, okay, what barriers does God need to break down in my life so that I can reach across the table and invite someone to the eternal table. And by the way, 
because you're reading that, okay, God's going to do this, going to go out. That doesn't mean it's not going to be awkward, <laughs> all right? It still might be very uncomfortable. I, I mean, look, listen to this. Listen to what Peter says to Cornel Cornelius. He brings in his family and his friends and says, hey, I'm going to bring this guy in. He's going to talk about uh, the, the God of Israel. Peter shows up and it says, and he said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or visit anyone from another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. Well, that's mighty nice of you. <laughs> the second part's pretty good, right? I, I, I mean, but if it were me, I'd like, okay, Peter, next time we go, we got to work on this a little bit. We got we to gotta, we gotta clean this up a, a, a little bit. And, uh, and here's why I say we need to make sure we're being uh, formed by the narrative of God's story than by the world. It's not unlawful for Peter to associate with these guys. I, I know he said that, but, but I can go through Leviticus and, and go, no, Peter, you can associate with them. That, that, that's not the issue. That, that's, that's not thus saith the Lord. That's thus saith a very strict tradition. That, that says, here's the people you can eat with, and, 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 or if you associate with this person, you're going to now be ceremonially unclean. Th that is tradition. That, that is not Bible. Okay? Now, he couldn't have eaten pork chops before. I can, I'll tell you that much. But when our tradition comes to the place where it's impossible for us to reach out to others, there's something wrong with the tradition. Okay? We've got to go back to the story. And, but this does tell me a couple things here. First of all, we don't have to have it all figured out. It, I, I, mean, I mean, none of these apostles, they, they didn't have it all figured out. Okay, They're, they're a work in progress. You're, you're a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. Secondly, I need to deal with my own prejudice. Yeah? And, and some of my prejudice, some of your prejudice... They may not come from God. They may come from my tradition or somewhere out there in the world. We need to go back to the scriptures. So we have this awkward intro, but then we see something that happens when we push beyond our comfort zone. What happens is we're able to receive and offer hospitality. I mean, isn't that the gospel? God offering hospitality, God saying, hey, come to my table. You know, God welcoming us. And, and I, think, I think we need to do both. I think we need to be able to receive hospitality and, and offer it. Like I said, the, the word table doesn't show up here, but I know they sat at a table or they reclined at a table because when Peter gets back from this meeting, he's going to be confronted by some others. The, the, the others, um, remember I said last week that you're going to be misunderstood if you go out and minister? Yeah, you're going to be misunderstood. Peter's misunderstood. And juicy news traveled fast even back then. <laughs> Acts chapter 11, let me, and then we'll go back to 10. But, but here's, here's what happens after he preaches the gospel there. Acts chapter 11, verses 2 and 3, it says, And so when Peter went up to Jerusalem, going back to the, to the boys, the circumcision, circumcision party criticized him, saying, you went to the uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter, you sat at the table. P Peter, Peter, you were there. We don't do that here. That's, that's not our custom. That, that, that's not our, our style. Now, now, to be totally fair, Peter was there a week ago. <laughs> okay? A week earlier, Peter would be like, that's right, we don't do that here. Okay. Well, maybe God's got, maybe God's doing a new thing, right? Maybe God is breaking down some old barriers. Now, what does Peter do once he's at that proverbial table? Now, besides eat, what do people typically do at tables? Talk. Okay. Nobody said look at their cell phone, but that, that's not. <laughs> 
that wasn't the answer I was looking for. The answer I was looking for was, you know, go back a little bit. What we, we talk, right? We sit around and we tell stories. All right, Christians, get good at telling two stories. And get good at listening to a third story. <laughs> Listen to their story. Tell your story. And then tell them Jesus' story. Tell them the gospel. Share the gospel. And that's what Peter's going to do. Peter's there, you know, and probably in his head, I can imagine that, like, like going, well, that was an awkward intro. <laughs> and then they go, well, tell us what, tell us what you came to say. Uh, verse 34, Acts chapter 10, it says, So Peter opened his mouth, which is always dangerous. He opened his mouth and he said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is, is acceptable to him. For the word that he sent to Israel, I, I, listen to the language, as for the word he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. In other words, Peter is saying God sent the message to the people of Israel for the whole world. Right? It, the message isn't just for me. Okay? The message came to Israel so that they could be a blessing to the nations. Right? comes to us, it goes out to them. And this message is good news of peace. God's in the business of, of bringing peace and reconciliation of all things. I, I talk to so many pastors and they talk about issues going on. And he, and he says, he says, am I missing something <laughs> with all these unreconciled relationships? Are we, are we missing something in the gospel? that Jesus came to reconcile all things, and he's Lord of all? How do we know that he's Lord of all? Great question. Peter's going to answer. Acts 10, verse 37, and he says, You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. And they put him to death, hanging him on a tree. Verse 40, but, <laughs> but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all people, but those who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he accompanied us to preach to the people, or excuse me, and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the appointed, he, he is the one appointed by God to judge the living and the dead. Through him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him, everyone that believes in him, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is awesome news, all right? I mean, he's saying, hey, listen, Jesus has defeated sin. Jesus has defeated death. And he says, and to be clear, that this resurrection, it didn't happen in a vacuum. It didn't happen in a hidden corner, all right? It was written about in detail for centuries prior to the events that took place in Jerusalem. And, and Jesus, Jesus wants to make sure these people get it. He appears for over 40 days. Like, hey, in case you didn't get it yesterday or today, you know, I'm alive. I've defeated sin. I've defeated death. And, and he came back and he gave them this, this message of, of hope and transformation. And at one time, the Apostle Paul tells us that he appeared to over 500 people. Jesus is like, I, I want to make sure my people have this message because like, like this is the hope of the whole world right here, that these guys get the resurrection and they go out and preach it. And the Bible tells us this, that Jesus bore the sins of the world and he defeated death on the cross of Calvary. Uh, Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf took my sin, took my shame, took, took my guilt, took my penalty, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
there's this, there's this picture. Think about this picture as, as they're sitting there and they're, they're talking, this, this promise of forgiveness. This is a promise of new life. Repentance and forgiveness. You know what that means? That means everybody in here, you can have a fresh start. You, you got a new story to go out and live and a new story to go out and tell. We can look at our lives and say, hey, I've been going down the wrong road. I've been listening to the wrong story. I've been living the wrong story. But just like Peter, just like Cornelius, you and I, we could be transformed by the gospel. That's, that's a message that he is, he is preaching. That, that is a message you and I are to go out and live. And by the way, let, let, me, let me make sure we're clear on this. This is bigger than, hey, one day you get to go to heaven. Okay? One day you get to go to heaven, all right? But <laughs> it's bigger than that. One day you get to go to heaven is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story of God saying, I want to transform lives right now. I want to start this transformation right now. I want to change you from the inside out. You were created in the image and likeness of God. You were designed. You were created to reflect his glory. But you know what happens? Sin enters into the world. And, 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 it, and it muddles that and it, and it breaks that down. But Jesus came in. And he didn't announce like, hey, one day you're going to die and you'll want to go to heaven. <laughs> he came in and he announced this. Mark 1.15, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. First century Jews are like, well, something big's happening. <laughs> the kingdom of God is at hand. And what do I need to do? Repent and believe the gospel. Believe this good news. Be believe this good news that, that the power of heaven, <laughs> the power of God is available now in our lives. And what do I need to do? I need to repent. I, I need to turn from the broken parts of my story. Right? There's broken parts in my story, and I need to believe the good news. Peter's preaching. This is, this is awesome how this happens here. Acts 10, 44, and it says, And while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit, we're going to have Acts chapter 2 all over right here, not, not, not with Jews only, but, but now with Gentiles. The gospel is going out to all nations. While he was still preaching these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed. They're like, hey, check this out. <laughs> it's happening. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. What an incredible picture here. There's, there's no altar call. There's no every head bowed, every eye closed. And I know people peek when you do that. But <laughs> you know what happens here? God's at work. It's as the gospel is being preached. And in, in other words, it's God doing the work. God, God is doing something. It, it's, it's not about me. It's, it's what we need to do is be faithful. For be faithful and proclaim the gospel. And in that moment, people surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. They put faith in Jesus Christ. And Peter says, hey, let's go out and baptize all these guys. Let's, let's take them into the water. Because these people, they're, they're part of the family. They're going to sit at the table with us. And then Peter would go on when, when the, you know, remember that question? Like, hey, Peter, we heard you were sitting at the table with Gentiles. <laughs> you ate their food. We don't do that around here. Peter said this, Acts eleven seventeen. He said, then, if then God gave the same gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit that he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I? Who was I that I could stand in God's way? Let me just close with three questions here. Who, I, who in my life needs Jesus? Not my life. Answer this first. Who in your life? Who do you know? Maybe somebody you already sit across the table at. Who needs Jesus? Here's the second question. Where's your table? Do you have, do you have a table? And, and maybe more important, 
how are you using that table? No, it, it doesn't have to be. It can be your living room couch, okay? Don't get hung up on the semantics here. But where is that place where you're saying, come, come, come and experience? Come and experience what you're going to experience in the fullness one day. And maybe the most important question is what needs to change? What needs to change so I'm not standing in the way? What, what needs to change so people will be comfortable to come to that table or to invite me to their table so that I could share good news with them? Let me pray. Father God, thank you for this incredible message. Lord, that we could sit at the table with you. That you sent your son. You sent your son to the nation of Israel. And he died for our sins and for our salvation. And you used people like Peter to, to proclaim that message that you and I, by faith in Jesus Christ, can be a part of your kingdom. We could be a part of your transformation that takes place right now. And, and Lord, I, I pray today, if there's somebody here that hasn't placed faith in you, that they would come see me, they'd come see somebody in this church and say, I wanna place faith in Christ today. I want what you talked about. And Lord, I pray for us that we would make use of the tables that you have given us. We would make use of a common table to invite people to the table. Father God, Holy Spirit, have your, have your way today. Work in our hearts. It's in Jesus' name I pray.
for being here this morning, being a part of what God's doing in our lives, in this community. Uh, continue to fellowship, sit at that table, one with each other. Talk. Amen. This is, this is what God has called us to do. It's, it's been ringing through. We went to Exponential back in uh, February all about coming to the table of the Lord, sitting down and understanding. Let's pray. Lord, just thank you, Father, for your peace and your spirit that's poured out upon us. Father God, I pray that we would continue to be your children, Lord, that we would speak to others, we'd sit down at the table and, and converse, Lord, of your good works, of what you're doing in our lives, in this church. Father, thank you for speaking through Pastor Don this morning, for opening our ears and our minds. Lord, I pray that you just watch over us, protect us, keep us safe as we go from here. Lord, let your light shine in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Don't forget, next Sunday is the potluck. Yeah. Yes, please help, help us by signing up.